Audubillah min ash-shaytan illa in rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Dr. Muhammad Manji. Um, I work at the Ibrahim Haji uh, Health Center as a neurologist, and we are here today to discuss a few things about stroke. Now, many people confuse a stroke with a heart attack, and I must say that the it is important to differentiate the two. The heart attack is a problem of a blockage in the heart, while uh, a stroke is something similar, but that does not occur in the heart, it occurs in the brain. And what I mean by that is that the brain, as you all know, is a very important structure. And the brain is supplied by an extensive network of blood vessels. And sometimes, because of certain disease states, certain arteries or certain blood vessels in the, in the brain become blocked. When they become blocked, it means that the blood flow to the area after that blockage does not occur and that area begins to die. Now, as you know, the brain controls so many important functions of the body. It means if an area of the brain that is supposed to control a particular function is deprived of its blood supply, it means that area, that area of the brain will not be able to perform that function and that patient will lose that capacity or will lose that capability. Now, before we talk about strokes, I think there is one important terminology we need to talk about and that is what we call transient ischemic attacks. Transient meaning that they are temporary, ischemic meaning that there is lack of blood flow and attack meaning that they come in sudden bursts or sudden paroxysms, meaning that these are so-called mini strokes or minor strokes that occur, but from which the patient recovers by himself, spontaneously. So if they recover spontaneously, so what is the big deal about it? The big deal about it is that if they recover spontaneously, they are harbingers or they are warning signs that tell you that another more permanent or devastating stroke is going to occur. And actually among patients who have TIA, among patients who have transient ischemic attacks, within five years there is a 30% risk that they will develop a full-blown stroke. So this is, th these are actually warning signs and whenever they occur, we need to pick them up and they need to be treated aggressively. There are two big classes of strokes. One is an ischemic stroke. The other one is a hemorrhagic stroke. Now, majority of our strokes are usually ischemic. They are the blockage type. They are not the burst artery type. So 85% will be ischemic and about 15% will be hemorrhagic. Now, stroke is a big problem around the world, but we are here in Tanzania and some studies that have been done here in Tanzania say that in urban areas, for every 100,000 people, there are 300 patients, approximately 300 patients who have a stroke. This is a big number. There are some risk factors which predispose people to develop strokes. We, we, we broadly divide these risk factors into two. We have the non-modifiable and then the modifiable. Non-modifiable meaning that we can't do much about it. For example, age. As someone grows older, their chances or risks of developing a stroke grow higher. But we can't do anything about age. Everybody has to age. But then we have what we call modifiable risk factors. So these are diseases that once a person gets, okay, they increase your likelihood of developing a stroke many times. If you are hypertensive, then a person who has hypertension has a six times higher risk of developing stroke. If you are, if you are a smoker, you have at least a double chance of developing stroke. If you have heart conditions, you have anywhere between two and six times higher likelihood of developing stroke. If you have uh, other risk factors like in a, um, a, a, a sedentary lifestyle, you are not very active. If you have a high carb diet that is not uh, well balanced and you are obese or, man, uh, or overnourished, you have a risk of developing a stroke. So these are risk factors and we call them modifiable because we, we want to uh, treat these risk factors so that the risk of uh, developing stroke becomes less. Either treat them or prevent them from occurring. Among the neurological causes of death, more than 60% of deaths in the community are occurring because of stroke. Among the neurological causes. 
So it is, it is not a silent phenomenon. It is there. It is affecting us. When someone has a stroke, what, what do they develop? What, what happens to them? How do we know someone is having a stroke? There is a, a, a small mnemonic that I'm going to share with you. It is simple and easy to understand. It is called B fast. Okay, B E F A S T. B stands for balance. Someone will suddenly lose their balance. E is eye problems. Someone will suddenly develop problems with either vision or their eyes will move to one side. F is facial changes. The face will go to one side. Okay, you will see someone and their face will not look equal. Their face will look a little bit deviated to one side. A is arm weakness. So you will see that one side of the body, especially the arm or the leg, is becoming weak. Okay, you will see that if you ask them to keep both their hands up, okay, you will see that one hand is slowly drifting down. So there is arm weakness. Okay, then S is speech difficulty. Speaking difficulty. These are people who have previously been speaking very well and suddenly they cannot talk anymore. So you have speaking difficulty. And T, which is actually the most important, stands for time. Because when you, when you see these symptoms, it is now time to rush to the hospital, right? So we are talking about be fast. Be fast, be vigilant, be alert. Whenever you spot these signs, please, T for time is very important. You need to go to the hospital. When these patients present to us from uh, uh, to the hospital, we, we look at them, we hear their story, we do their examinations, and then they are sent for some investigations, mainly a CT scan. Sometimes an MRI of the brain may be required, but mainly they will do a CT of the brain just to make sure it tells us whether the stroke is the blockage type or the burst pipe type, right? Is it, is it an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke? Now, presenting to the hospital on time is extremely important because the brain cells which are called neurons they cannot grow back they have some healing power but they cannot regenerate the more the delay in reaching to the hospital the more neurons are lost and the more those problems those, that paralysis that speech speech difficulty that balancing difficult difficulty becomes more and more complete and more and more permanent if these patients present to the hospital early and on time, they reach to us within three to four and a half hours, there are medicines that can be given to them that can improve their health, that can help them uh, relieve these uh, deficits that are occurring. Some of these patients become bed bound and they require a lot of nursing care. They require care for nutrition. They require care for their regular hygiene. They require their bladder and bowel care. They require help for feeding and preventing pneumonia. They require to be turned sometimes so that they do not develop uh, pressure ulcers on their back. And sometimes even communication difficulties are there and they may require assistance for communication. You can see that someone who has previously been totally healthy is now suddenly devastated because of this illness. This, this disease is really devastating. Physiotherapy is a cornerstone among the medicines that we give, among the treatments that we give. One of the main treatments is physiotherapy because we are trying to give the brain a chance to relearn what it has forgotten. I think that uh, I, we have spoken enough and we should say a few things about prevention because it is such a devastating condition. We need to prevent it. We need to prevent it together. Uh, we have to prevent these risk factors which give us a high risk of stroke. We have to lead more active and healthy lifestyles. We need to be more careful in terms of the food that we are eating. It should not be high carb, high fat, high oil kind of diet. If we have risk factors like diabetes, it should be well managed. It should be treated properly so that your glucose levels are in control. Your blood pressures need to be under control. Your cholesterols need to be under control. Uh, some people may actually get blood thinners that will prevent their risk of developing a stroke. This is especially true if you have already had one stroke, okay, and you have recovered from it, and we want to help you prevent from another stroke in the future. Uh, some aspirin or blood thinners can be given. Um, if you are a smoker, if you are a drinker, please quit those habits. They put you at an increased risk 
uh, for strokes are myths that we want to disprove here in public. One is people think that strokes cannot be prevented. That is a big myth. That is not correct. Strokes can very much be prevented if we follow uh, these healthy lifestyle um, um, advoca uh, advocacies that have been put to us. The other uh, myth is that we think that strokes only occur among the old people. This is not true. Strokes occur in all age groups, okay, and therefore it affects everybody. We all need to be vigilant. Nobody is exempted. The other um, um, uh, wrong notion is that the strokes occur on the heart. The stroke does not occur on the heart, it occurs on the brain. It has the potential to absolutely debilitate you and make you uh, bedridden. It is a devastating occurrence, we need to prevent it. So every year, um, the, on 29th of October, is declared as the World Stroke Day. And this is our message during the World Stroke Day, that all strokes can and must be prevented. It is a devastating occurrence and we must prevent it at all costs. We must all come together, follow these guidances and improve our health. Asante san.